Okay, hi guys. Sorry, I really don't like the way I look on TV. Okay, bumper's going on. We got Jason working the dials. Yay, Jason! Okay, we're talking marijuana. All right, guys, we are back on the Dr. Dolly Show. Thank you all for tuning in. one 877 dolly one eight seven. Somebody keeps calling in. Not sure why somebody's calling. So sorry, you're going to see my fingers a lot. Um, okay, marijuana. I am getting so sick and tired of hearing people say, well, we should fight the opioid crisis with marijuana. Let's legalize marijuana and help stop all these deaths from opioids. Now, mind you, I voted to legalize marijuana. All right. Oh, you did. Yeah, I did. I did. I, I, I wanted to because number one is I wanted us to study it. Number two is I wanted our cops and our, you know, police officers to not have to be dinking around with people having, you know, little bits of it at home and whatever. I'm like, look, you know, the cops got bigger fish to fry. Right. If they don't want to have to deal with the hassle. A lot of the ways I vote is the way the police officers vote. And so I'll before I go to the ballot ask my police officer friends and I'm like what do you guys think and they're like well you know you know well, we think this is good this is good this is good and I was like and, and so that's kind of how I vote because I mean I just really really love cops and I think what they need you know we need to support in terms of you know law enforcement and you know drugs and so I you know for me when it came to you know legalizing marijuana I was okay with it because I do think there are some health benefits I think we have a real untapped resource there. However, I want it studied. I don't want it half-assed. And unfortunately, what's been happening is we've been legalizing it faster than we have the infrastructure for it in terms of, you know, um, you know, figuring out if people are high when they're driving, in terms of workers' comp accidents, in terms of um, what it could do to the lungs, what it could do to the heart. You know, we have all these little studies starting to kind of creep up going, well, it could put you at risk for a heart attack, could put you at risk for stroke. Um, it, you know, might help you sleep. It might help pain. And so we just don't know yet. And I want everybody to just kind of hold their horses and slow down when it comes to fixing epidemics. Anytime we as a country try to stop an epidemic, we make a new one. Like, for example, tobacco. Everybody's patting themselves on the back going, good job with tobacco. We got a lot of people off smoking. And I'm proud of you, all right? I'm not a fan of smoking. I think smoking stinks. I don't like secondhand smoke, thirdhand smoke. Uh, good job getting us cut, you know, having us decrease the amount of smokers we have out there. But what epidemics did we spur now? Well, now we have the obesity epidemic. Rather than people smoking when they're, you know, hungry, they eat. And now we have a vaping epidemic. Oh, well, vaping is healthier than smoking. Is it? Is vaping safer? We don't know. We assume it is because smoking is so bad. But do we know 100%? I mean, we're getting chemicals that we don't even know about. We're getting food flavorings that shouldn't be anywhere near the lungs. Do we really, really know? So now we have this vaping epidemic. We have this opioid. We have this obesity crisis. And now the opioid crisis. Maybe one of the reasons for the opioid crisis is because we're getting fat. So now our knees hurt and our back hurt and our shoulders hurt. So we start to kind of make new crises. And so, all right, what if we used marijuana for its uh, muscle relaxing properties, for its, you know, sed sedative properties, um, you know, pain relief properties? All right, I'm a doctor. Fine, tell me what to prescribe. How much? Is it consistent? I mean, if I'm going to take you off a narcotic and have you risk withdrawal, uh, risk suicide, risk lack of sleep, and then get into a car accident the next day, let me know how much I'm supposed to give you in terms of milligrams, and is it going to be consistent each time? See, people want doctors to tell you to go to the nearby dispensary and get some pot, and smoke it. No, 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 no. Most of us doctors aren't going to tell you to do that. One is your lungs are supposed to do only one job, and that's to oxygenate your blood. That's what your lungs are supposed to do. And so the last thing I want is you to get crap into your lungs. If I am going to recommend marijuana, I'll recommend edible, 
But you can't just eat dry marijuana. It's got to like, you know, heat up. It's, it's got to heat in order to get that THC component there going. But um, I would say, well, then edible. And then how do we quantitate that? How do we quantitate what you're absorbing? There's a lot of science to this. We can't do things half-assed when it comes to this. And then are you going to grow tolerant? With THC, you can grow a tolerance and a dependence. So am I going to now get you dependent on marijuana? But people will say, well, Dr. Dahlia, we're only going to do the CBD component. Well, that's fine, but what about tolerance to that? If you have cannabinoid receptors in your body, you could just keep making more receptors, meaning you're going to need more and more CBD. So I'm a fan of the idea that we have something that might help a lot of ailments, but we need to slow the hell down when it comes to saying, okay, well, this is going to cure, you know, all the all our issues, all our crises. Now, I've, I've thrown a bone to marijuana in terms of I've seen a lot of my previous patients not get diabetes who should have gotten diabetic. They were overweight. They were of the age. They ate like crab and they didn't get, they didn't get diabetes. And, you know, when I asked them, I go, do you smoke pot? And they're like, yeah. So there might be a little something to insulin sensitivity, but somebody needs to study it. Who's going to study it? Who's going to spend the money to study it? Well, it's going to be a pharmaceutical company. Have pharmaceutical companies studied this? Well, they are. We got Epidiolex from GW Pharmaceuticals. That's great, but it could only be used. The FDA only approved it for two rare types of epilepsy. We can't use it willy-nilly on all seizure disorders. And when people say, well, Dr. Dahlia, look, if it's out there, doctors should grow a pair and just use it. Um, are you going to sue me if something goes wrong? If your child has a seizure and I tell you to use marijuana and not treat you, you know, per the standard of care, am I going to get sued if that child has a seizure? Dies? Probably. So doctors can't jump on the bandwagon if we don't have protections in place that you and the family aren't going to try to take our house and take our practice and sue the hell out of us. So you see why we need more of an infrastructure going on right now? And this opioid epidemic we have is because people, you know, are in pain. Some people like to get high. Some people might be getting duped. But we have a pain problem. Rather than making a political agenda and trying to advance your political platform, why don't we spend some time figuring out how to deal with people's pain? Don't go away. We'll be right back. One eight seven seven. Doc Dolly.